Hello everyone! Welcome! I hope you are all doing well. I am super sorry this is probably the creepiest way to start a video, but I just wanted to show you the contrast of what makeup can do for you when you have different parts of your face that are just not as flattering as others. And for my older ladies, um, we're going to talk a lot about what we can do for wrinkles, um, saggy eyes, uh, light wrinkles around the eyes, what you can also do for hooded eyes, and like lines and stuff around your lips. So let's get started. Are you ready for this reveal? Because it is huge, okay? Ah! So I have nothing on this side of my face. Um, you can see I have a little hyperpigmentation. I have some redness through here, a little bit of darkness underneath my eye. Um, all I'm using today is Limelight by Alcone products, so I will let you know what those all are as I go through here. I start with hydration. Hydration is the key to helping those wrinkles be more pliable. So if you add an extra layer of moisture to your skin before you start, I don't care what your moisturizer is, I personally use... Um, Limelight by Alcone's Skin Therapist first, and then I actually add this booster. This is the must-do. It is a face oil. I will put that on first, especially when I'm really dry in the winter. And today I'm actually going to mix it in with my foundation. Um, the foundations come in this little magnetic clamshell, and they are wax-based. And they have 50% pigmentation to them. So they are really, you really don't need a lot at all. I'm just going to put a little drop. That was a little more than a little drop. Little drop of the oil actually in my actual pan. And I use this flat-headed um, buffer brush. This is the number five brush. So you're just going to swirl your oil around in your foundation. Now this is going to be way too much for half of my face. And you want to just start with a little dab. The foundation means it's wax based. Spreads a lot better once it's warmed up. And then you just want to massage that in to my line here. Around your eyes. And all that redness is going away already. Gives me a nice even surface to work with. Make sure you bring it down at your neck a little bit. You don't want a harsh line cutting off right where you would see your foundation. And especially if you have a lot of wrinkling, the more you massage this around, the better it's going to work with your wrinkles. And then it means that there is oil in there mixed in I like to take my blender sponge and I just do a little padding just to make sure that is set I like to set the foundation because I don't like to use um, setting powder over the top if you have a lot of wrinkling, um, that is, it's actually gonna set in your wrinkles and make them more visible. So if you skip that powder, um, unless you have a little dry, like um, oiliness on your lids, I do get a little oily. 
So I'm just going to take, this is just a clean eyeshadow brush. Take my clean brush, and this is actually my trio that has um, the setting, the pressed powder, like a highlighter, and a bronzer all in one. So I'm just going to dab a little in there and do my lid. A lot of times we have a lot of wrinkling underneath our eyes, so we don't really want to put a whole lot under there because that's going to make your powder set and enhance those wrinkles. And concealer. Um, if you have a lot of darkness or broken capillaries in the eye area, a peach color concealer is going to work best to cover those purple and bluish tones. Um, Limelight's their number three concealer. I just have them in my little palette here. It has a peach tone to it. So that peachy tone is going to cancel everything out. And you just want to pat that underneath where you have purple or bluish colored. And you can do that on the top of your eye too. I don't really have much, so I don't do anything up there. And you want to just massage that around a little bit. Make sure that is warmed up because that is actually wax base also. And the concealers are waterproof. So definitely like to put that around your eyes to make sure that if anything runs during the day or we cry because we're ladies and we do that, right? So that you know your makeup's not going to run off on you. And I do add a little bit of powder to my T-zone just because... I get a little oily there throughout the day. So this is, I have to show you the size of this brush. It is huge. This is their all over powder brush. It is number two. And I will post all these things down below for you guys also. Down at the middle. And um, blush and bronzer options. Um, if you have some wrinkling and stuff on your cheeks, it is best there to use something with a little bit of shimmer. That's going to give you more of a youthful glow to your skin. I'm going to do just a little bit of contour. You see where this side of my face just looks a little bit fuller than this side because I've actually contoured this side. So you can tell there's a little bit of difference there. And I'm just going to use the bronzer here. It has just a little bit of shimmer in it. And I just use a tapered brush. And you can suck your cheek in if you need to, just in that little hollow of the cheek. And then I do mine on my jawline. And a little down the side of my nose. I did that side already, but we'll do it again. And I do mine up on my forehead because I do have a high forehead. So when you have a little bit of depth up here, that kind of just brings that back down to reality. All right. And then blush also. A little bit of shimmer. And you can see the difference in the two of these. Let's see if you can see. This one has a little bit of shimmer to it. That is going to add some youthfulness to your cheeks. Give them a little bit of life. So I don't go any higher than the corner of my eye. And I try to stay two finger widths away from my nose. So wherever you like to put it in there. Um, there are charts that have where the best options are for your face shape. Which makes that really nice. And I'm sure I just got this side a little bit darker than the other one. There. Now you can see this side just came back in a little bit with that little bit of bronzer on there. Now, for eyeshadow, we don't want to use anything shimmery on your eyes if you have a lot of wrinkling going on. Um, try to keep it matte and... I have a whole palette of colors here. I'm a little <laughs> overboard, but I'm going to start with um, this light pink. This is number 41. It's pastel about me. 
and I just use this large eyeshadow brush. You just have to tap it in. It doesn't need a lot. And I'm just going to put this underneath my brow and in the corner of my eye here. And I like to do a little bit underneath in this corner because that just brightens things up a little bit. Now you notice how the outside corner of this eye just looks a little saggier than the other one. And I do have a slight hood of my eye. Um, that's basically meaning when you open your eyelid, it disappears a little bit into this fatty part of your eyelid here. So if you notice on this side, just putting a darker color above where the crease is just makes my eye, that part of my eye, sit back a little bit and my eyes pop a little more. Where on this side, it looks like that's just overtaking my whole eye area. So I'm going to use, it's kind of a medium brown color. This one is called Taupe for the Best. And we just are going to dab that in here. And right in your crease. And you kind of got to play around with this a little bit to make sure when you open your eye, you can see it where your eye sags. Hard to work into the camera screen. <laughs> so I'm going to try to look above past in my mirror a little bit. There, you can see that just brings that back a little bit. Just with that little pop of color over the top of your lid. And now, beans, this corner of this eye is always a little droopier. I want to grab. A darker color and do that in the corner that's going to bring that up and open your eye area up more so I am going to use this dark brown here this one is called brownie points who doesn't love brownies and just do a little angle in the corner and blend that in blending 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 is our friend Dab a little of that off here. You got those even? It's hard to tell when you have a liner on the other eye. <laughs> All right. And then for my brows, we always want to do our brows because <laughs> obviously. As you age, you lose pieces of hairs in there. They get pretty scarce. And the eyebrows frame your face. So you definitely want to add a little color in there. For me, I have to add a lot of color because I don't have much for an eyebrow. So to do an eyebrow, the trend right now is to have your, to have your arch right on the outside corner of your eye. So you want to bring your little brush up here. And we'll just mark that okay and then bring this out right from the corner of your eye so you can hold your finger there too if you need to and just make a little line so you know where to go and then from the bridge of your nose up past your eye here so that is right there kind of right where mine ends We'll just finish that line. And let's get the top of the arch in. Meet that up in the corner and fill it in. And then we will connect this side. And I like to use just light, airy strokes. Fill in the top. Let's 
Sorry if you hear washing machine and dishwasher running here. Multitasking. I'm a wife and a mom and I own a salon full time. So we have to multitask and do things, don't we? There, adding an eyebrow changes your face so much. And I know so many people are super scared of eyebrows, but just try it. It's not going to hurt anything. You will find a lot of people will comment that something looks different on you, but they're not quite sure what it is. You don't have to tell them your secrets. No way. All right. I am like super picky about my eyebrows, so <laughs> we'll mess with that later. But it looks pretty good. Um, now, liner. I like to use setting spray. To use my liner, I actually use the same eyeshadow I did in the corner here and on my eyebrow to do my liner underneath. So I use Limelight's 10 Years Younger Setting Spray. And I just sprayed on a cotton round. Or you can use a washcloth or whatever you have. And I use this, it's kind of a smoky liner brush. This one would be brush number 11. And I dab that into my color. First I'm going to dampen it on my little sponge here. And you're going to want it to feel wet on your eye when you start. So get that loaded up and if you have any wrinkling under here and you need to hold your eye to get your liner on, that is perfectly fine. And it depends on the shape of your eye. Um, a lot of times if you have smaller eyes, I just like to do the top in the corner. Just bring that halfway across. Just to give your eye a little bit of pop. I am going to bring mine all the way. If you have bigger eyes, mine are bigger. You can add that to that. And I am a fan of the wings. So depending on your eye shape, I just do a little tiny corner with this brown. And it just makes everything pop. So for my gals that like the liquid liner, we were going to do the top. I am a fan of the wing. My eye shape works really well for that. So I use the perfect eyeliner pen. This has an actual brush on it. It's not a felt tip, so it glides really nice. I just start in my corner and bring it across your lash line. And then on the outside, I kind of start not quite as far as the eyeshadow goes, but pretty close. And bring that up to your lashes. And then I like to connect from the bottom of my eye out. So it's like a little triangle that you have to fill in. And there's the beautiful wing. Now for eyelashes, ladies, I use a that uh, pressed powder and a mascara wand. You're going to want to roll that around in there. This gives your lashes a primer because we also lose eyelashes as we get older. So add a little primer to your lashes and then go on with your mascara. And sometimes our lashes are hard to find. 
This is the Perfect Mascara by Limelight by Alcone, and it is a one-step fiber mascara. It does not flake off fibers on your skin. I just got black on there. And I like to get to the base and wiggle that back and forth. Catches all of your lashes. And also on the bottom. Wiggle that into the lash line and move it out. And you let it dry for a second. I usually apply two coats just to give them an even. Nice. I love long lashes. So the more you put on, the better as far as I'm concerned. And now for your lip area. We tend to have a lot of wrinkling around our lips as well. As we get older, I lost that brush. Um, it helps to add concealer, like the concealer you just did under your eyes, to line your lips with concealer. Because there's a lot of little lines and hollowness, sometimes sagging skin, and that will cause shadows around your lips. So adding the concealer on there is going to brighten that area up. So I go right on the top. And you can also do this after you apply your lip color too if you are prone to making mistakes with your lip color. So we add a little line and I like to put a little through here to brighten that up and then I will just take my brush and blend that in a little bit and then we're ready for lip color I am going to do one a little darker here, I think, just to show you. Let's do Cake Pop. Cake Pop is my favorite. It is like a really pretty, not hot pink, but it is a pretty pink. And this is the Enduring color. Which is the long lasting. I usually get about four four and a half hours without having to reapply. This is where doing your concealer after. Works wonders if you make a mistake, which I did over here. You can just fix that. So now if you have flatter, smaller lips, you can actually enhance them a little bit with concealer as well. Same concealer, same brush. We're going to do, um, you can do a dot on the top or the bottom or two dots on each side. And we're going to do two today. And just adding that little bit of light, blend those in a little bit, is going to bring a little more dimension to your deflated lips, make them pop a little bit more. So if anybody has any questions, please feel free to get a hold of me. I will drop the links below. And to finish off your look, I use the 10 Years Younger Finishing Spray. This is going to give you a nice, healthy glow to your skin and set your makeup so you don't have to worry about it disappearing throughout the day. So I just do a nice fine mist. You don't want to overspray and you don't want to spray too close because you want the mist, not the actual spray. And you just let that dry and you are good to go. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.